San Francisco's infamous Millennium Tower keeps on tilting at breakneck speed after work to save it was abandoned last summer. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that San Francisco's infamous Millennium Tower keeps on tilting over more and more at about 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters per year. A $100 million construction project to stop the tilting was abandoned in the summer of 2021 when it became clear that the construction did nothing to stop the building from tilting over at a speed of 3 inches per year. The tower opened to great fanfare in 2009, and its 400 apartments quickly sold out for a total of $750 million. Soon after, some of the apartments reached prices of more than $5 million each, but all that came crashing down when it became apparent that the building was sinking into the soft soil and also tilting at an unsettling speed. Today, the building's total tilt at rooftop level has already reached 26 inches or 66 centimeters. The engineer tasked with saving the building says if the structure keeps on tipping over, the elevators and plumbing will eventually stop functioning. He added that the best way to stop the tilting is to attach 18 steel piles to bedrock under the building. Apartment owners say the building's uncertain future means their multi-million dollar investments have turned into dust. They say the real value of their super luxurious apartments is now zero dollars, as no one wants to buy them for any price. The UN recently signed a deal with the Korean port city of Busan to build the world's first floating city on Busan's coastline. Here are the details. Business Insider reports that a historic deal was signed on Thursday, November 18 to build the world's first-ever floating city on the coast of South Korea. The South Korean city of Busan agreed to host such a floating city with the backing of the UN Human Settlement Program and Oceanics, the company that designed the floating city. Like many coastal cities, Busan is threatened by rising sea levels, and the floating city is designed to help such cities expand onto the sea. The city will be based on a collection of hexagonal platforms that float on the water. These platforms will be strengthened by a limestone coating that's more than twice as hard as concrete while also being buoyant. The city is designed to survive Category 5 hurricanes. It would also be floodproof as it is designed to rise with the sea. The floating city would produce its own food, energy, and fresh water. Cages underneath the platforms could be used to house scallops, kelp, or other forms of seafood, while aquaponic systems could use waste from fish to fertilize plants. The next step will be for Oceanics and the UN to work with Busan's officials to fine-tune the final design of the floating habitat. Oceanics says the whole process would take a total of three years, so it expects to see the prototype in the water by 2025. Saudi Arabia Mostly famous for fueling the world's disastrous fossil fuel habit and an appalling human rights record, says it is creating a futuristic green megacity. Here are the details. Saudi Arabia has begun construction on an eco-friendly, linear city, according to a Bloomberg interview with its chief executive, Nad Al Nasser, who says it could be inhabitable by 2024. The idea is that the city, called The Line, will be the first part of a wider region-building project known as NEOM and will operate without cars, streets, and carbon emissions. Designs available on the city's website show three layers, a surface layer for pedestrians and two subterranean layers for transport and infrastructure. According to Dazeen, the city will consist of city modules linking the Red Sea coast with the northwest of Saudi Arabia to create the 100-mile or 170-kilometer-long line. AI-driven transportation will be facilitated by massive data harnessing, and the city will ultimately be home to 1 million people, all living within a 5-minute walk of essential daily services such as schools, medical clinics, leisure facilities, and green spaces all powered by 100% clean energy. The broader project, which this is a part of, NEOM, was announced in 2017 and stretches into Jordan and Egypt, while all being completely powered by renewable energy. It will ultimately measure 10,230 square miles, and the 500 billion US dollars of funding for it will come from the Saudi government, its sovereign wealth fund and investors. One of the main goals behind NEOM is to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy in an attempt to move it beyond oil, with a megacity focusing on industries such as energy and water, biotechnology, food, advanced manufacturing and entertainment, according to Business Insider. However, plans to build five palaces in its massive business zone, plus hints at there being less conservative laws within the region, perhaps identify the class makeup of the project's target citizens. 
And while attempts to move away from fossil fuels should be welcomed, the accusation is in it that this whole project is a kind of slick greenwashing PR campaign designed to wipe away human rights abuses reported by Amnesty International, such as the use of torture and punishment, massive restrictions on political protest, and huge discrimination against and ill treatment of women and migrant workers. Alternative living arrangements may well be required in order to counter and mitigate climate change then, but we should probably remind ourselves that other futuristic cities are available. For example, in 2019, Italian architectural firm Stefano Boeri Architetti unveiled design plans for a smart forest city in Cancun. According to the firm's website, the site would consist of 400 hectares of green space and feature public parks and private gardens. The smart forest city could contain green roofs and more than 200,000 trees that would be able to absorb approximately 116,000 tons of carbon dioxide. The company explained that the area would be surrounded by a ring of solar panels and agricultural fields to provide renewable energy and food for the city. The development's agricultural fields would be irrigated by a water channel connected to an underwater maritime pipe, and the site would use electric and semi-automatic vehicles instead of traditional vehicles for both residents and visitors. Visitors to the forest city would be required to leave their traditional vehicles at the city's outer edge. An ambitious new project could soon be providing the very cold city of Helsinki with a sustainable source of heat, while also doubling as an attractive location for Finns to escape the long, harsh Nordic winter. Here are the details. New Atlas reports, citing architecture firm Carlo Ratti Associati, that Helsinki has named the Helsinki Hot Heart project as the winner of its Helsinki Energy Challenge. If the project does go ahead, it will be built in the ocean next to the city and will consist of an archipelago of 10 artificial islands built on top of huge water basins. Each basin will measure 225 meters in diameter and hold up to 10 million cubic meters of water. Energy drawn from wind, sunlight, and other renewable sources will power heat pumps that will heat water and pump it into the huge water basins. The tanks will act like a big thermal battery, storing the hot water until it's pumped into the city's heat distribution network as required. Additionally, thanks to all the heat being produced, four of the large islands will serve as recreational parks with pools and tropical forests installed. The idea is that these will be encased within a transparent dome and LED lighting, allowing locals to enjoy warm parks in the middle of winter. The idea was inspired by the Finnish ideal that everyone has the right to relax and enjoy nature. The designers of the system say it can be expanded to provide all Helsinki's heating needs by the end of the decade while producing zero carbon emissions. The cost is expected to be 10% lower than Helsinki's current heating costs. Paris is preparing a treat for people who enjoy being surrounded by beautiful architecture and nature. Here's a look at the grand design. The city of Paris is famous for its beautiful architecture, urban design, and landscape architecture. This attention to intelligent design has made the city one of the top destinations for the world's richest tourists and their holiday spending. However, CNN reports that the city has now decided to spend $305 million to make the city even more beautiful. One of the most famous avenues in Paris, the Champs-Élysées, is set for a facelift that will see it transformed into a green, pedestrian-friendly space, after Mayor Anne Hidalgo gave the go-ahead for a major renovation project. The thoroughfare, one of the world's most famous shopping streets, accommodates eight lanes of traffic as it runs between the Arc de Triomphe and the Place de la Concorde. Under the new plans, vehicle traffic will be reduced by half, while pedestrians will be able to enjoy wider sidewalks and more greenery. This means that the famous avenue will be transformed from a busy roadway into something that looks more like a spacious pedestrian mall filled with trees. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.